So, we have seen two very interesting examples so far. So leave that one there for a moment. And let's look at one where there's a minus sign. Because sometimes when there's a minus sign, a lot of students have a lot of problems. So let's deal with that now. Let's say, for example, we have one like this. 3, 3 on y minus 1 on y plus 2. The LCM will be y multiplied by y plus 2, as we indicated before, multiplication of the two denominators. We have to divide the LCM by y. Now, when you divide these two terms by this one, as we did before, as we have shown below, the y will cancel with the y. So the y plus 2 would be left to multiply by the 3. How do we write that? 3 times y plus 2, and we write back the minus sign. When we divide the LCM now by the y plus 2, these two terms by that, these two will cancel themselves out. So we are left with just y to multiply by 1, which gives us 1y. We have a bracket, and remember we did brackets the last time, so let's deal with that. I can put back the LCM right away, because that does not change. And then the top part, now I have to multiply 3 by y and 3 by 2. 3 by y will give us 3y. And 3 by 2 would give 6. And then we have a minus y by itself outside of the bracket. Remember that minus y is not affected by the 3. The 3 only affects what comes in the bracket directly after. This is a different term by itself. We have to look at the last, what we had here last, to see if there are any things to combine. And we see right away, we have 3y and we have minus y. 3 of a quantity, we are taking off 1. That would leave us with 2y. And then we have plus 6 here, and that is over the LCM, which is y, y plus 2. So that will be the final answer for that one. I hope that you're quite comfortable with what we have done this. So far, I'm going to do one more example of this before we get into some factorization. So let's look at this, this one now, this final example here. So let's change the letters and use A this time around. 2, A plus 3, minus 1 and A. The LCM would be a combination of the two multiplied, A plus 3 multiplied by A. Then we divide the LCM by A plus 3, which means the A plus 3 will cancel. A would be left to be multiplied by 2, so we simply get 2A minus. Then we have the LCM to divide by A. Now the A will cancel the A, so we have A plus 3 to multiply by 1. So it's really 1 times... A plus 3. Let's go across and do the simplification of this. The LCM will remain, that's A plus 3, multiplied by A. Now let's deal with here, we have the 2A, which we can do nothing about, that's okay. But this minus 1 here has to be multiplied by A, and it has to be multiplied by a plus 3. Minus 1 by A is minus 1A, which is simply the same as just minus A. And minus 1 by 3, minus 1 by a plus 3, and negative by a positive is a negative. That would give us minus 3. So the final step is to combine what can be combined. You have two A's, minus 1 is like two apples, and you take off one. So you're left with just one apple, just one A. The minus 3 has nothing to be combined with, so we write that back. And the LCM is below A plus 3 and A. So that will be the final result. A minus 3 divided by A plus 3 times A. So that is simplification of expressions which are in the form of fractions, fractional terms. I hope that that is fairly clear to you. So we want to spend the remainder of the time and deal with some factorization. Let me just take off simplification from here. And we're dealing with factorization this time. 
And factorization suggests that we are trying to come up with factors. Now let's go back to something that you know. Let us say we have that expression. You're told to simplify it. What would you do? You multiply the 3 by each term in the bracket. 3 by x would give you 3x. 3 by y would give you 3y. So you see, I have removed the bracket, and this is what I get. That's fine. But suppose you're told to factorize 3x plus 3y. The question is, what do you do? Because factorize means that you need to get out some sort of factor. You need to get something that is common. So when we speak about factorization, in this context here, we are speaking about taking out common terms. Now let's examine these two terms here. We have 3x and we have 3y. What is common? Normally you will check the numbers and then you check letter by letter. You can see right away that 3 is common here and here. So it means that we can take out the 3. If we take out the 3, then some terms must be left on the inside. How do we get what should go on the inside? The easiest method is just to divide by what we took out. So we can divide the 3x by the 3 that we took out, divide the 3y also by the 3. And when you divide by 3, the 3s will disappear. They will cancel themselves out. We are left with y. When you divide the 3y by 3, the 3s cancel themselves out. We are left with y. This is the answer for the factorization. So what do we notice here? When you have to remove a bracket, you get terms. It's like expanding really in this case. When you ask to factorize, what you're really doing in effect is to put back the bracket. So if you are able to multiply out, to remove a bracket, you should be able to factorize. Because factorize has to do with putting the bracket back into the expression. That's what factorization deals with. So you could see the relationship between the bracket is in, you get number of terms, then to get the original, you simply divide by what you took out and you end back with what you started with. So that's one example there. And I'm certain that that excites you a little bit. So let's move on to another example. Let's say, for example, we have 5AB plus 10B, and we want to factorize, which means we want to take out what is common. Now, there is a procedure in doing these things. It is best if you do number by number, letter by letter. So you check, we see 5, we see 10. The question we have to ask ourselves, what is common? What can I get out of here and also here at the same time without a problem? I can take out a 5. I can get a 5 from this and a 5 from that. So I can take out 5. Then I check, I see A. But there are no A's here, so A is not common. Then I see B. And I see B there, so B is common. So I can actually take out 5 and also B. What would remain on the inside, I can get that by dividing each term by what I took out. I divide by 5b, I divide by 5b, because that's what I took out. The 5s will cancel, the b's will cancel, so I'm left with just a. 1 times a times 1, so I'm just left with a here, and I write back the sign. Similarly, when I divide here, 10 divided by 5, I'll get 2. And the B's will cancel. So I just get a 2 there, and that will be the answer for number 2. Well, I think quite interesting. So we do a couple more examples. All right, we do a couple more examples. Look at number 3. Let's say we have x squared y plus xy squared. We have to check to see what is common. As I said, you normally do letter by letter, number by number, etc. The only numbers we have here is really one and one, so that is how we look at the letters. x squared and x. What can I get out of this and that? I can get out x, because I can take an x from this and x from that. Then I have y and y squared, I can also take out y. What will be left? I divide here by what I took out, which is xy. I divide here by what I took out, which is also xy, and let us see what will remain. I put in the sign, that sign goes there. Now, when you divide the y's, they will cancel, 
I have here x, but this x squared is actually x times x. So this x can cancel one of those leaving just with one x. So I put that there. And then here I have the x's cancel. And then I get to the y's now. This y will cancel one of these because this is really 1 times y. 1 will be cancelled, so I'm just left with y. So that will be the answer there. We have time to do just one more example before we bring this lesson to, to a close. And let us look at this example here where we have 5 r squared s squared plus 10 r s cubed. This will be an example for those who are stronger in maths because they'll get it right away. The others will hope that you look at it again and make sure that you have it. Now we check the 5 and the 10 and we know we can take out a 5. That's okay. We check r squared and r. What is common is just r because we can only take out r. Then we check, this is the part I wanted to get, s squared and s cubed, s to the third power. Now what can we take out? It will have to be s squared. Why s squared? I can get out s squared from this. I can also get out s squared from that. Because you see, s squared means s times s, and s cubed means s times s times s. So I can get out 2 out of this. I can also get out 2 out of that, so it's possible for me to get out s squared. So that's the reason why it's there. And the last thing we do before we close off today is that we are going to divide by what we took out. We divide by 5 r s squared both terms. So when we divide here, the 5's will cancel, the s squared will cancel, 1's there, then this r will divide into this given one of them left, so we have just an r left there. Here, when we divide, we're going to get a 2, 10 divided by 5 is 2, the r will cancel the r, those are gone, then this s squared, we have s to the third power, 2 of them here, s times s, three of them there, so one would be left. So we have two s. So our final answer, five r s squared, open bracket, r plus two s, close bracket. And that's where we finish our lesson two at this time. So we hope that you would look forward to lesson three. So for now, continue working hard, check for the worksheets, do your work well, and we hope that you'll benefit much from visiting Vinci Classroom. Thank you very much.